Welcome. I'm Marianne Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law today. I'm delighted to have another Think Tech host on as guest, um, Carl Campagna. We're going to talk about various aspects of the Women's March on Washington and the Women's March uh, here in Oahu, which you attended. I'm delighted that you attended. My, hus my husband attended it as well. Um, but first, I'm going to tell you my tale of woe. I've told this story so many times. I was all set to go to Washington, and I flew out of Hawaii, and I was delighted delayed and delayed and delayed and the airlines totally messed up my my historic weekend I had a historic weekend plan and I spent the historic weekend in New York City instead of in Washington which is where I wanted to be but your wife yeah. Sherry Campagna who is the state organizer really of, she of, was officially of the, the state coordinator yeah. uh, for the yeah she went and she, I know she had a great time so you can bring us information through her and you can tell me a little bit about uh, how was the march here and how to, I mean over two million people all over the world participated in this march it was it was a stunning success it was very peaceful um, apparently people were jammed they couldn't walk I mean that the people were so jammed together a hundred thousand in New York and like a hundred and fifty thousand in LA it was just amazing. So what was Oahu like? How many were here? Well, that is a, that's a good question. Uh, and everybody will have their, their take on it. It's hard to have a precise number. Um, I'll, what I'll say is it's, it seems to have averaged between eight and 10,000, wow. what people believe. That's the biggest march ever, I it's, think. It's huge. It's huge. I, I was there, and it was a swarm, a sea of people. It, there were so many. It was just fascinating. I, I got pictures of them. Like, okay, this picture doesn't come close to capturing all of it. It was just really an amazing thing to see and a wonderfully inspiring thing right. to be a part of. Right. After the, the dismay over the past few months, it was. It just felt so good to participate again in a community. Uh, action, you know, in a an organized civil action, you know, I, 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 that's the antidote for the for the Trump blues, you know, is to keep keep working. It is because in, in those moments, when something, when you feel that something, I, to a certain extent, you could say has been taken away from you. It's not how that works, really. But when you felt something, and when you feel strongly about something, and it doesn't happen, you feel a sense of loss. Right. So the very first thing you want to do is go do something about that, right? Right. So this gave everyone for the past couple of months a focus right. for all of that internal conflict. Right. So. You know, what's interesting about this march is that, you know, uh, it was as big as many of the bigger marches from, you know, the 60s and the 70s, but it, it had a very truncated time to organize, considering how short a time this march was organized in, two months, because it was really just the day after the election that... It started slowly, for that matter, as well. I mean, it's wonderful, you know, the woman from Maui... Sh Shari Work, uh, is that her name? I, I wish I knew her name. We, um, uh, we, Michael Galoya was just telling me her name, and I, unfortunately, I don't, I, I don't remember Name. I apologize for that. Um, but she started it with with this this one little idea that she wanted to post up, that she wanted to do this little march. And as Michael explained it, you know, she went to sleep that night with about 40 people saying, "Yeah, that we agree, and we'll we'll come join you." And when she woke up the next morning, there were 10,000 people saying right. yes. And right. all of a sudden, so that that happened really quickly. But actually, then taking it from this idea into an actual event. That was a slower process because immediately everyone's like, "Well, what does this mean?" So right. when, you, when you try to get, well, who who's going to commit to and being involved? Right. Who's going to? You know, we need sponsors to pay for things. How do we pull this together? Oh, it's always a tremendous organizational uh, quagmire to yeah. put on even the smallest, you know, march uh, for the small, you know, for not even you know lo local marches are. Uh, so I can only imagine what the the, the vicissitudes of of uh, trying to put on a national march. It must. But it, 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 everybody behaved heroically, spectacularly. Absolutely. I, mean, I heard, if it's true or not, I, I, I heard that there was not even one arrest. No, no, yeah, I haven't heard of any arrests either. Yeah. No, yeah. And considering there had been arrests the day before during the inauguration, I was really very uh, worried when, you know, that the town was tense and the police were tense. But apparently, um, you know, it's funny, I always think about this. I think about the Vietnam War and, 
when you start bringing mothers in and mothers bring their kids in and grandmothers come in, you have a whole different, it's a whole different um, yeah. vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have that, um, you, it's a much more measured vibe. You know, yeah. so so the people who attended create create the reality of what what goes on. You know, yes. and the fact that women from kids, girls to you know senior citizens participated so strongly. And it wasn't only women and girls. No, it wasn't. It was also the number of of men who were there. You were there. My husband went marched with his daughter here. Yes, because it because. We are better as a people when we recognize right. and support each other. And anybody who's, and we don't operate, most of us try to not operate from a position of, of fear or, or, or feeling that they are threatened. Right. And nor should we. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes that ends up being, I think, some of how things are done. But, um, but that's, and it, you know, it, 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 it was the Women's March, but it was about Human rights. Human rights. That's right. Women's rights are human rights. Yeah. It's a civil rights issue. And you know what I love about you, and it, 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 same thing about my husband, that I know that you are very how supportive you are, Sherry. And you ha you have somebody. You know, you're married to that person, and they're running around, and you don't see them. You see them. You know, high and by, and and everybody's overbooked, and everybody. And to to for a guy to really support a woman like that, it's 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 just delightful. Full, so, you know, it's a, it's a, you know. What I'll say is, it goes both ways. It sure it goes both ways, but but you know what? It not I show not not that it need not go both ways. It often does not go both ways. It often does not. And um, it's much more acceptable women standing behind men than men, you know, standing behind women. You know, people well, just are not used to it. To say acceptable uh, is is another. I think problem to, to people to believe that that is more acceptable that the women stand behind or to the side mm -hmm. is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I I think that for for me, I know that I have three older sisters. I was raised by a stay-at-home mom, so I had a very strong female, uh, uh, I guess, connection. Right. Uh, right. Through that, right. um, a lot of my great friends over the years have been females, right. where I've connected with them in different ways. Obviously, you connect with your male friends, you connect with your female friends. Well, because of my sisters and because of my mother, my respect, my appreciation, my my inner belief of just of justice and equality, and just there, it wasn't a question, and it was always confusing to me whenever anybody would suggest otherwise. I would just always come from that perspective. It's like, okay, well, who are you? Not what are you? Who are you? What who are you about? Who influenced this? Your interest in justice and equality, and you know, movers, shapers. Uh, you what, know, the uh, what? justice and equality. That you know what? Not everybody's interested. In. People are interested in a lot more material things than those things. I know it's true, and I, I, I will say, that's a good question. That goes back a long way. Um, it really started. So I was I was raised I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. I made my confirmation when I, when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. and I was taught a lot of things through that. And uh, as you and I were talking before, the most important lesson that I took away was compassion, right, and care for one another, right. And I think that that has been the center point i think of everything that i that i have been engaged with why i do it um is because it comes from that sense of okay well how, how are we caring for one another right how identification with the other person right yeah. exactly so i so i would say that it, that's actually where i think it comes from and then you know you, you add in you know, the superhero, this, that, and the other movies that you see, and all of a sudden you get this sense of all that. And Well, once uh, you start participating, and I think some of the young activists who had never marched before found this out, that uh, it's addi it's really addictive. It's Because so, everybody's a little trepidatious about going to Washington. I, I, I've marched on Washington tons of times. And uh, I said, oh, you'll have so much fun. It's fun. What, once you get in it, providing nothing goes wrong and the weather really isn't bad, and I mean, things can go wrong, but, but at the heart of it, if it's going well, it's, it's, it's the mo most fun you can have. Because you're, you're doing, you're, you have the whole 
zeitgeist of the whole community surrounding you. Absolutely true. And, and energizing Absolutely you. true. And what I have noticed and what I have learned in, uh, over the past several years of being involved, being an advocate, I'm a policy advocate. I get involved in issues and I try to bring the issues into a conversation. And if I can bring them into the legislature, that's what I try to do. And and the reason that, well, not, not the reason, but how that happened was I, I got the idea. It's like, well, you know what? I, I like this idea. This seems interesting. Uh, I, let's go participate. And I didn't know what that meant at first. I started to participate. I started to be involved. But what it really, st where it started from was I was asked, because I was working on a renewable energy project. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I, I would, you know, you get involved in how the tax credits are this, and you get involved in how these things work. Mm -hmm. So the policy side comes up, oh, well, the reason for this is because of this tax credit, which was this policy, and oh, the clean energy initiative, and okay, so I started to, okay, I see how that works. So I started to be involved and, and learn that side of it, and then I was asked if I would help write a resolution. They just wanted me to give the bullet points of things that could be pointed to for you know renewable energy, solar integration. It's like, well, all right, well, here's some of the things that you know, right. that I that I picked up. Stuff that you've been thinking about. Exactly, stuff I think about, stuff I've been reading about, uh, conversations I've had with you know state energy office and you name it. Um, so I put it in. I said, well, I, I hope this helps. And they said, that's extraordinary. So they took that and they put it, so I was like, well, great, I'm glad that was useful. They put it into a resolution, and this was on the Big Island. This was uh, at the time chair of the Big Island, uh, Dominic Yugong. Okay. Uh, he put it in, into the resolution. It got put in front of the uh, 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 city council on the Big Island. That resolution passed 9 nothing. Wow. That resolution got turned to the PUC, and the PUC went, okay, great, and they turned to the utility, and the utility went, okay, fine. We were requesting 100% penetration into each circuit with this resolution. They were currently at that time giving us 50%. So we were asking for the right. other 50%. Right. Within, within a month of that resolution passing, the utility went, okay, 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 and they gave us half of what we asked for, like that. They need you in Washington. Well, You're in the wrong place. <laughs> well, what, what I felt in that moment was, wow, I, I, an average citizen who votes that doesn't engage in this stuff, just helped impact local policy. It's very powerful. It was, and that's the snowball. That's where right. the snowball began for me right. to say, oh, wow, there are other issues, and hey, how about I go get engaged with the Democratic Party, because I, I lean Democrat. Well, I found out how much of a Democrat I was. Right. And how about I get involved in these issues and those issues and learn more about the process. and. And what I, the power from that, yes, it's something that, that, that it's, it gets into you. It makes you want to do more when you realize how you can impact and shape. And that's been my story is I'm just an average person like everybody else. Right. I have my job. I do my thing. I take care of my kids. I love my wife. I do everything I can. And I have an opportunity. Some call it a duty, but I have an opportunity to say, hey, how about this? A privilege. I think it's, it's a privilege, a, frankly. I, I don't want to call it a privilege because it's not only for me. Well, uh, but it's, uh, for me, it's a privilege to serve, you know, talk about Catholicism. It's a privilege to serve others. It's a privilege to care for people that are less fortunate than you. So we're going to talk about this a little more. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll talk about the future of the movement, where we see mm. it going, going big places. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward, and the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and this show is dedicated to talking to, with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon, and let's move Hawaii forward. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired, because there's an artist inside you, too. Join us 
is on center stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hi, you're watching Life in the Law, which airs Wednesdays from 1 to 1.30 on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm lucky today to have Carl Campagna, my, a, a co-host in the sense that he also hosts the show. And now, movers, shakers, and... Reformers. Reformers. And directly before my show. So I'd urge you to look, check out his show as well. Um, we have uh, a simpatico... Uh, political beliefs, I think. So, you know, we were just talking about how, how movements are built on the, it, just anonymous individuals yes. finding out that they can do something. It's, yeah. it's stunning, you know, when you, when you learn that. It's, yeah. you know. When you realize engagement is as simple as you engaging. Right, just doing, doing something, do yeah. something, yeah. And, and uh, you know, from little seeds, big, uh, big tr trees grow. So I know you were speaking to Michael G. Yeah. Um, earlier, and where, where does he see the movement going? Does is there a because we have to keep the pressure up? In yes, the, we do. Um, there's 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 a lot of plans in the making from a number of directions, um, but this whole movement was able to pull together a lot of people, and, and yes, the the waking of the sleeping giant. Um, so the whole key from this point, and, and the conversation started, as, as I have overheard, the conversation started about what to do next before the march happened. Right. When we went to the seeds of Martin Luther King uh, Day, seeds of uh, peace uh, uh, training, we, that's, that was like the main issue on our lips because we knew that Washington would be a go and I knew it was going to be tremendous. I could just tell by the level of excitement and interest. So yeah, we already did start discussing that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so now, getting everybody energized the way that we have, and having so many people, I say we, I, I, I'm You're happy fine. to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, but, but having so many people energized and activated and ready to be engaged, ready to do the next thing, the key is to not let that wane, not let that fall away. Right. So making sure that everybody is getting connected, getting their emails in, getting their phone numbers in, making sure that they are hearing about what's going on, making sure that they are aware of the meeting that's coming up to talk about this or the Facebook uh, page that's talking about that and making sure that we continue to hear from each other and talk about, oh, we're going to meet about this, oh, we're going to have an event here, we're going to do this and staying engaged and right. having that plan. But you know, I have to say, I think the way the events are going to unfold in Washington, particularly with the Supreme Court nominee, mm -hmm. I think it, it will incite many people to stay engaged. I think people are going to be very surprised at how things go and are going. And things we took for granted, th things that we thought lo were long ago settled, are going to be revisited. And uh, that We're seeing that already. We're seeing already with just the executive orders that the current president is already laying out the rolling back of piece by piece, everything is being put in place. Right. And how far will it go? Will all regulations be rolled back? So therefore we're gonna go back to soot-filled air from the environment? You know, I think if they could, they would. I look at the head of the EPA. I mean, I, I think, I think, I'm, I think that the administration must feel, oh, we won the lottery, so we're gonna take our capital and spend it like mad. It's not just the administration, it's the entire Republican Party. They found themselves with a bag full of toys that right. they didn't expect to have. And right. now they're like, oh, I don't know what to do next. We can do everything. Right. So now they're about to try to do everything. And they right. really have about 18 months to do it. Right. And right. Right. We, we should definitely discuss that and let uh, the audience know. Probably the most significant thing uh, people can do to get involved is to uh, support candidates in the next election cycle yes. who will promote our agendas, the kinds of things we want to see uh, done, uh, women's rights, uh, you know, voting reform. Uh, the, those, those kinds of things, because they're gonna, it's going to be so that it's going to be really impossible to vote. I mean, if the Republicans have their way, they'll, they make, it way, they'll make it really harder, harder. hard, really, really hard to vote. Exactly. Which exactly. is that's kind of the fundamental issue, you know. And by the way, it's not just running for city council or running for state house or state senate or or U.S. It's not just those seats. It's also getting involved in the agencies and the departments that work within the state, within the city. 
because those seats in those positions, some of them are, are just jobs, some of them are appointed positions, mm -hmm. those are the people who actually administer and engage from the policy side what it then means. Right, right. How, so how would you recommend getting involved in a, a, at that level? Do you know, I mean? <laughs> you, well, there are, you can go to the, the websites. You can, the state has websites. The, the city and county has websites that you can go to where you see the jobs that are available. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that stuff, though, if, if the appointed positions, it, it comes down to having the, uh, uh, having the criteria, understanding what the criteria is, for what they're looking for, mm -hmm. and having the background that can fill that criteria, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then making your case for it. Right. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it seems to be a lot of the same people because, well, they've already been doing it. Well, yeah, and that's why, yeah, I definitely always urge people uh, th that are not experienced to step up, or as my husband says, lean in. My, my husband's fond of telling me to lean in, just lean to in. drive me crazy. That was a um, movement from a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. and, um, Th that's one thing I liked about this uh, march, actually, is there's a whole new group of uh, people uh, giving input, running things. So you need to refresh those faces. You need to refresh those positions. Otherwise, new ideas don't begin to, you know, don't burble to the surface. And you have right. the same old people who, you know. And, and nothing and, changes that. And Hawaii, I think, is also a little bit... Um, it likes things to remain the same. It, 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 I, it, no, it, no one likes change. Change is uncomfortable for most right, people. Right. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a potential problem when you have the same people. It, it, you can't you can't put the same people in year after year after year and expect a different outcome. Right. 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 If if unless you think everything is fine, maybe some people do, but. Clearly, they didn't think it was fine when they voted for Trump. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people didn't, d definitely didn't think it was fine. And but I have a feeling, maybe those people are going to, once if health care is taken away and certain other p things that entitlements or whatever you want to, entitled is the wrong word, uh, diminish. I think people are going to really start questioning what 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 they bargained yeah. for. You know, I, I think that I think that that's true. Um, uh, however. There's a lot to look at. Uh, there was, we saw the report in the last couple of days that uh, one of the executive orders was to uh, allow um, the North Dakota pipeline, right. and the Keystone pipeline, to right. go again. Okay. I, I put up a Facebook post about that and said, okay, you know what? The Sierra Club is calling for action because this is this is not acceptable from an right. environmental perspective. My my post was, I agree 100% with the Sierra Club. However, most people aren't going to care and don't care. And the reason they don't care is it doesn't put food on their table, it doesn't pay their bills. Right, because Trump said that all, all the piping should be made in the United States. And right, which, but that's the next step. So, um, so to, to, finish, to finish my post, I said, unless that pipeline does put food on their table and pay their bills, in which case they like it. Right. So, and then add to that what you just said, yes, he wants all of the steel to be from US manufacturing. Well, that means we're going to have new jobs. Right. Well, that's what he promised he would do. Well, that would actually do that. It would create some new jobs. It would, in some ways, perhaps revitalize a bit of that industry. What that's going to cost, we don't know. But one of the things that they will do that another executive order was pointing out is that we're going to slow down and or stop the regulatory process. They're actually putting in a hurdle, or, or a, not a hurdle, they're putting in a go around. Uh, a, a, to, like to, a fast circ cat. to circumvent what they what they're saying is, if you if there's a new regulation, you have 70 days in which to show us how it's going to work, and if you don't get it to us in 70 days, it's we're going to go right around it. Wow, and that's, that, that's that, incredibly restrictive. That's been put in place. So right. that, I mean, that's what the executive order was. We if you have a regulation, you have 70 days to prove it, and if you don't, we're going to go right around it. So that's all new regulations. Now, that just opens the door for saying, okay, great. What regulations that they've already said they're going to reduce, are they going to reduce? Right. So will we be going back to the 1880s with our air quality? Well, I, you know, I think we have been with certainly like in, in, the, in labor. If you, if you grew up as I did in the 70s and 80s when I first began working um, and 
it was everyone had health care, everyone had paid days off, everybody had permanent jobs. There was no there's no gig economy. So that's been dismantled and that's sort of been pushed back to the nineteenth century. Yeah. The rights of workers have been pushed back dramatically since the nineteenth century. They are trying over and over again the right to work laws in many states, all of these things that do everything in their power to either cut out, eliminate the unions, they would like to eliminate the minimum wage. How is this helping people? And this is the thing, all of these policies that they're talking about, all of these executive orders that he's putting out and everything that they appear to be ramping up for, we'll see, looks like people will be making less money, they will have no health care or very little, or it'll, uh, how expensive it'll be is a whole other question, I don't know, but they won't have access to it, especially if they start repealing the pre-existing conditions. And, right, Okay, right. So, so we're gonna have, uh, and then and then the, based on the education thing that's gonna happen with Betsy DeVos, what is that gonna mean? You know, I, funny you should mention Betsy DeVos, I think she's not gonna make it. I think that they're not, they're not gonna allow her through. I think she's such a bad candidate. Um, and I think in a weird sort of way, there's gonna be discrimination against her because she's a woman, and I think it's well, gonna flip. I, I think I, she's very, very very unappealing. I, I don't. I think she's unappealing because of her position on vouchers and what oh, she absolutely. has done in Michigan absolutely. on policy. In no other way, the fact that she's a woman to me has is, is irrelevant. I know, but I think the the that the the her. Her, I just think that Congress is going to find her type of power a little bit uh, uh, we'll un see. unpalatable. We'll see. What, what we've heard for years is the, the Republican Party wants a voucher system. They, what we heard Trump say recently is the Department of Education is a wash in funds. Right. A wash in cash. Right, right. Okay, so then, okay, what I'll say is uh, the amount of money that exists in the, the, the Hawaii Department of Education, very little of it gets into the classroom. Right. Okay, well, if we're looking at it from that perspective, how do we make education better by putting more money in the classroom, which includes the teachers? Right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I I love this conversation because my mother's a teacher and uh, I think, you know, teachers really should be earning, I'm, you know, twice what they're earning probably, uh, if, if times, not more. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I'm an attorney and I and I sometimes I shake my head and I say, there's something wrong in this society. But I wanted to I want to thank you for coming on. Oh, thank, thank you for thank giving you. me your perspective. It's totally great. And um, thanks for marching and thanks Sherry for everything she's done. And hopefully Sherry will be on the show and tell us directly about what she saw and Should where definitely. we're going. Where Should we're definitely. going. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Okay.